This is Return to Tennis. I'm your host, Aaron. Thanks for returning. So, after six months and having to pay $30 more, it's finally arrived in the United States. We have one. We're going to go out and start hitting it, get our first impressions up. It is the Artango TR960 Control Tour. Uh, the racket endorsed by Guy Monfils. You can only get them at the decathlon stores, which there are only in California. Just came up available on the website, I think on Friday last week, somewhere around there. I managed to get one. Uh, it is a 16 by 19 string pattern. They make an 18 by 20, but it wasn't available on the website. They only had the 16 by 19. Uh, once again, us consumers here in the U.S. are getting shafted. Um, retails for $160, which is a really great price uh, when you compare it to, say, a Wilson Ultra or a Head Prestige, which a lot of playtesters have compared this to. Those rackets run like $250, $260. So at $160, it's a really great bargain. Um, in Europe, it's $130. I don't know why we're getting you know, an up mark on the price here. But at 160 still a great deal when compared to like a Wilson or a Head top quality frame. Uh, without strings, spec weight, unstrung, 305 grams. It's supposed to be about, I think it's 315 millimeter head balance. Yep, yep, about, that would put it about 7 points headlight, seven and a half points headlight unstrung. Uh, with strings, it's probably sitting more around like five. I tested the weight as soon as I got it unstrung, and it came in three grams over spec. It was at 308. It doesn't bother me. I like my frames heavier anyway. It's just interesting to note that it's three grams over spec weight. That puts it in the same category as like Wilson Head Technofiber, where they run that plus five minus margin. So it's comparable to the other big companies. Better than Bob a lot. That's running plus minus seven, but not as good as Yonix, who runs plus minus two. And then you still have other companies that are always on spec, which is what everybody should be striving for. But it is a gorgeous racket. Aesthetically, it is beautiful. It has a nice thin beam. Uh, man, I like it black with the silverish gray kind of tones little hints of purple in the hoop it is a gorgeous frame feels really good in the hand we're going to get some first impressions of it um, we're going to hit it stock i'm not going to do any modifications no customization of the frame yet with strings it came in at 324 grams uh, once i put a dampener on it'll probably be about 326 um i Normally like my frames in that 330 to 340 range. So this is going to be light. A lot of other play testers have commented that it is underpowered. Which would make sense. It is a control frame. It's not meant to be a power frame. It is a control frame. It is for precision. Um, a lot of people are customizing it. Which got me familiar with a term. A tennis term I wasn't really accustomed to. I hadn't heard too much. I remember I haven't played in over 20 years, so there's these terms out there. I'm not, they're new to me. They're probably not new to you, but they're new to me. A lot of play testers describe this as a perfect platform frame, meaning that it is easily customizable. Uh, so a lot of them have, been, have other play testers have been adding weight to the hoop at 3, 6, and 12, adding weight in the handle. Has a trap door. No problem. We can change the weight. We're going to hit it stock. It's strung at 51 pounds with uh, Tier 1's Strike Force Rip, which is a string I really enjoy. It's a good spin string. We're going to do some first impressions with it, see how it feels. And then we'll probably do a follow up video later on uh, after we've hit it a few times and gotten used to it and then maybe made some changes to it. I have a feeling that I'm probably going to end up treating this one like I did the Technofiber TF40, where I keep the string tension low, which is, I, I intentionally strung this down from what I normally would for that reason, because I had already heard it was underpowered, and then I maybe add some weight in the handle 
to kind of get it up above 330 grams. We'll see. We're going to hit it first, see how it goes. We're going to get it on. We're going to get some film today. We're going to get out there. We're going to whack this around a little bit and, and see how it feels. All right. Let's get out there. All right, guys, here we go. Not a bad start there. I'll be honest, I, I warmed up first. I used it as a warm up. I hit about, probably about 80 balls on the warm up. And I was having some serious reservations about this racket. I could not rein the forehand in. I was hitting a lot of balls long. Uh, I couldn't seem to get, it seemed to have a really high launch angle that I just could not get a read on. Uh, forehands were flying, backhands were off center. I couldn't catch the sweet spot very well. I was really struggling with this racket in the warm up before I started filming and was feeling like the, <laughs> the film today was gonna be pretty bad. But once we started filming, I kind of got a better feel for the racket. I started hitting some solid forehands the backhands I'm still trying to get, uh, I, I, want that, I want that really strong, powerful, driving two-handed backhand, and I don't seem to hit those very often. I haven't found my rhythm for those. I can hit them back and in the court, but I can't really drive them very well. Um, I hit some nice slices with it off the backhand side as well. The racket definitely lacks some mass. Um, Miss hits were not good. I could feel vibration pretty quick, and I think that has to do with the racket's weight. It just doesn't have a lot of weight to it, uh, so it doesn't handle uh, miss hits well. I get a lot of, of vibration transferring through the, the frame into my arm. Uh, it's a thin beamed racket, so it just doesn't have, I think, the necessary mass to handle vibration. Uh, with some added weight, maybe in the hoop, maybe some added weight in the handle, that might clean up a little bit. We'll have to see. We're going to hit it in stock form for a while before we make any changes. Um, it is definitely a little underpowered. I wouldn't say it's as lacking in power as, say, the Technofiber TF40. But it is a little underpowered, but it is extremely well controlled. Uh, I got comfortable to a point where I was hitting... Uh, forehands almost anywhere I wanted in the court. I'd go inside out, down the center, and then cross court in sequence. And I was having some success, a fair amount of success doing it. But that initial opening warm-up hit I did with it was concerning. It's the kind of racket I think if you get it, uh, the first time you hit it, maybe the first couple times you hit it, you're going to struggle with it. You're going to have problems finding the launch angle on it, kind of dialing in the sweet spot a little bit. But as you hit it, you will start to figure things out. I was definitely had my forehand dialed in much, much better when I started filming. Uh, still hitting some balls late, and that's not just the frame, that's just me. But it was an enjoyable racket. I mean, is it going to replace my my favorite 98? It's not. It's not. It It's decent, but it's not that good. Um... As I said, this is my just my initial first impressions. So, and my first impressions are telling me that it's a nice racket. It is lacking in some areas, especially power. But with some customization, some added weight, I mean, you could really turn this into a massive weapon on the court. That wasn't bad. In any case, uh, see that one there, I just, that one went flying. That one's out the back of the court as well. I, I really struggled with the launch angle on this. That was a good one. Again, I had the strike force rip at 51 pounds from tier one. Not as soft as the Y-Tech strings, but an excellent spin string all the same. <laughs> For the price at $160, um, yeah, it's well worth that price it's probably worth more than that honestly if i had to rank it in my current 98s i would say it is i like it better than the diadem i like it better than the technofiber probably not as good as the selenko or the pacific though and definitely nowhere near my yonix or my angel k7 
but it's it's a good frame um we'll hit it like this for a while i think what will end up happening is i'll end up opening the trap door in the in the handle and adding some weight to it uh, to see how it feels once that is in place and once it has a little bit more mass on it if it hits a little better for me but overall decent racket if you're looking at a 305 something that feels like a, a head prestige or maybe like a, a wilson ultra and you're not looking to spend 260 or 250 dollars or whatever crazy price they're asking for give the r tango tr 960 a go it's it's a nice frame solid racket i, I enjoy it it was a nice slice see that one just went sailing but that's all i got for you today guys um we do have a, another racket review on the way uh, something I, I came across you know me i can't pass up a sale and i caught one so um but that'll come here later in the next week or two we also have utr matches coming i'm gonna push myself i'm gonna play three utr matches in three days and so that starts this saturday i'll have the updates for you as they come in but presently, we have three matches scheduled, one a day for the next three days over the weekend through Labor Day. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We always appreciate it. May all your returns be for winners. And not like that last ball I just hit, Jesus. And we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.